Okay, next we have what are bipartite graphs. Bipartite graphs are basically graphs in which the edge should be only for the set X to set Y and not within the set. Basically, what we do in bipartite is we basically have bi means two, partite means sets. So bi means there should be two sets of graph that you can say in a way, I think. Yeah. So let's say that this is my set one and this is my set two and that I can connect any any edge between uh, any of the vertices from set X to any of the uh, vertices of set Y. So this is a bipartite graph. However, if I do something like this, then this is not uh, a bipartite graph because uh, there's a restriction that the edge should not be a, within the same set, which means uh, this edge is actually incorrect and it shouldn't be in the same set. If we were try, if we try to make this in a bipartite graph, it would be something like this. Um, if there is an edge over here, and there's an edge over here. Can we make this into a bipartite? Hmm. Let me see. If we make this as x and that, yeah. Okay, so if we make these two as x and we make this thing as y, and if we rearrange it, so taking those, these two vertices, so that is x now, and then taking these three vertices together, that's this one, then that one, and then that one. And then the red line was basically over here. So the first one and the second one. So that, and then there was the first, this one, which was connected to the last one. This is a bipartite graph. So it really depends on which sets that you're defining as X and Y. And uh, if you define them in a correct manner, then that could be converted into a bipartite graph. Then we have what is known as complete bipartite. And complete bipartite, as you know, complete means that every vertex should be connected to each other. Bi means two sets and partite means basically two sets. So in this case, um, this would be something like this. Every vertex is connected to each other. Right? Let's make this bigger. Right? And another way how you could check if a graph is a bipartite or not is by the uh, um, the, per the color test. Um, it, since this is bi, therefore we will be using two colors. So let's say I'm choosing a red color and I'm choosing a blue color. And what you have to do is just circle uh, the nodes with any uh, with opposite colors. So, for example, I start with this vertex. You can start with any vertex you want, but I'm just starting with this vertex. And you highlight this with a red circle, or you just shade it, or whatever you want. You just need to highlight it with a red color. And then you go to the next vertex, which is uh, connected to this vertex, which would be in this case this one. And you set that to blue. And then uh, you, then you go to the next vertex, and that would be red. So you're doing it in alternate. And then this one, that would be blue. And then this one would be red. Now, if you notice, this red and blue basically donates the two different sets that we were talking about, X and Y. Where blue is the X set, and Y is the, uh, the red one is the Y set. And you would notice that for each blue color that uh, the blue highlighted color vertex has a red color attached to it. 
and it isn't the case where a blue and there are two consecutive blues which are connected to each other. So for in this case, when we said this is in the bipartite graph, we could also prove this using the color one. In this one, I would be using um, yellow for X as I used over here and green for Y. So let's say this one and then the next one would be green and the next one would be yellow. And this is what we did. We basically placed these two over here and we place this green one over there with the rest of them. So that is how it works. Also, also, since these two vertices do not have any edge connected to each other, so you could also do it like something like this as well. You can say that X basically has three vertices and Y has two vertices because this vertex, uh, vertex isn't connected to any other vertex. You could do this, you could have this alteration, x, y, or you could also have this one, where x just has one vertex and y has four vertices. So there isn't a problem over there. Then we also have that all star graphs are bipartite graphs. Okay, oh, also another thing. Um, to represent bipartite, we always write this as this notation, k2 by 3. So this 2 is representing the number of vertices in the x set, and 3 is representing the number of vertices in the y set. And similarly, this is also k2, 3. And for different cases, you could say this would be k3, this one would be k3, 2, this one would be k1, 4, and so on and so forth. For star graphs, um, we can make any star graph where every single graph, where a center is connected to each one of them. And this is always going to be a complete bipartite. And the way how this is a complete bipartite is um, we can have one set X. So let's try to apply the color test over here and you will see why this is a bipartite graph. Um, so we have, let's start with the first vertex. Let's say this one. Then I go to the next vertex. Then let's say I go over here. Okay, so I can't go anywhere else. Now, I'm going to go from over here to there. That's red. Okay, I can't go anywhere, so go over here to here. Red, here to here. Red, 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 and red. And as you can see, the two there's no edge connecting between two red vertices, which means that this is basically K1, comma, 8, bipartite because there are eight vertices in those set Y and there's only one vertex in set X. So that is a complete bipartite. And the reason why this is a complete bipartite is because this vertex, this blue vertex, is connected to every single vertex in the red region or in the Y region. So let's say, for example, if we remove this line, this would be still, this would still be K18, but this wouldn't be a complete bipartite. It would just be a bipartite graph. Hope that makes sense. And then we are going to focus on what is k-partite. K-partite is basically k now means it's not no longer two, and this could be anything. This could be three, sorry, three, four, and five. In this one, we have four divisions. We are saying. Um, let's say uh, we have a graph something like this. This, right? So we can say there's this division, there's that, there's that, and there's that. So this is now going to be a K per type because you have first set, second set, third set, and fourth set. So I can call them set Oops. Set A, B, 
B, C, and D. And for if you want to use the color test over here, then you would have to use four different colors. But I'm not using that. So that is K peritide. And a K complete peritide would just mean that this would then be connected to every single edge over here. This would be connected. Whoops. Over here. And then uh, this one, this is connected, this is connected, and that. Now that is a complete four per tide graph where you represent this as k2 1 1 2 so that is a complete four per tide graph now let's take a look at the last topic of this video which is going to be graph combinations so we have three different combinations that we're going to talk about over here the first one is the plus or the summation operation the second is the union and the third is the join in the first one, if you have two disjoint graphs, which means you have this graph and this graph, and they're basically disjoint to each other, then if you join these two graphs using the summation sign or the plus sign, that would still be the same graph. So for example, if I had a graph like this, and I had a graph like that, and if I want to join them, that would still give me the same graph because they're disjoint, which means they're not connected to each other, which means that this is a separate graph and this is a separate graph. And when you add two different separate graphs, it's just going to be itself. However, when we are talking about union, we're talking about joining the same edges. So for example, if I had these one, this, this, um, this graph and this graph, and I wanted to do a union between them, then I will first of all find the same vertices. So the same vertices is A, that's A over here. F, F is over here. G, I, C, and B. Now I would join all of the word, uh, the edges which I have in this graph. So A and F makes an edge. This is done. F and G makes an edge. And then A, B, and A, G. And there's nothing over here so this is this one and there's b for this and i for c and b to c and the reason why i uh i applied the operation over here was because um it's always easier to work uh to apply the this the edges or connect the same edges uh from smaller graph to a bigger graph because if you would do the opposite, then that would be a bit more difficult. So the resulting graph, resulting join graph of this is going to be this thing. I'm not going to redraw it because that's going to take some time. But the resulting join would be this graph over here. Then we have the complete joining or the join function, which is represented with a V. And basically what you do is, for example, if you want to apply a complete join over here, again, complete means that you have to connect every single vertex to the every single vertex of the second or the other graph. So in this case, Y, X, Z would be connected to A, B, C. So let's connect this, that, that, and then B, this, this, that, and then C, and that is the join of this graph, of these two graphs. So yeah, those were the some of the very basic uh, graph ter terminologies that we have discussed. Uh, I know it was a lot, and this is probably going to be a very big video, but this basically summarizes all of the very simple and basic uh, graph theory uh, terminologies that we will be frequently using in the future videos so thanks for watching and if you like this um don't forget to like and subscribe my youtube channel and yeah thank you bye bye